Hello again, and thank you for joining us on the Providence College Pop- Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Joyce, and our producer is Chris Judge of the class of 2005. Our guest today is Jim Crowley, head coach of the women's basketball team. Jim recently completed his third year and most successful season yet as the Friars coach. He came to Providence in 2016 after spending 20 seasons at St. Bonaventure University, including the last 16 as head coach. This past season, Jim guided the Friars to a 19 and 16 record, including eight and 10 in Big East Conference play. The Friars' 19 wins were nine more than the previous season, and their most in nine years. And furthermore, PC made its first postseason appearance since 2010 and took full advantage, winning two games in the WNIT and reaching the round of 16. Welcome to the Providence College Podcast, Jim. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on board. Uh, first, congrats on a fantastic 2018-2019 uh, season. Thank you so much. It was uh, it was fun. It was fun. It was a good group. You know, in addition to the uh, milestones that I just mentioned, you also recorded uh, your first Big East tournament win since 2001. You had back-to-back conference road wins at Xavier and Butler, which is not an easy thing to do, obviously. Uh, 11 home wins in Alumni Hall, uh, the most in, in nine years. You know, that's a, a really impressive turnaround. And uh, were you kind of surprised at all by, uh, b- by those records? You know, I think at the end of every year, you're, you're surprised in one way or the other, sometimes good, uh, sometimes bad. Um, we knew we had ability. What we didn't know is how quickly that talent would mesh together. And, and we really needed two things to happen. We needed uh, our seniors to really uh, elevate not just their play, uh, but their leadership and to do so without ever having examples of that. Um, and they did that incredibly well. And then we needed our, our, our young players to be open to, to that leadership and be open to, to learning and to, to understand how quickly they had to assimilate and change their games to the college level. And we we're fortunate they, they, they did that quick enough that, and, and they kind of shared it um, and they did that quick enough to, to allow us to, to play some decent basketball. Jim, if you could kind of break down the season in terms of highlights and also what were the key areas or elements of success this past season? Yeah, you know, I thought, um, you know, early on we went out and we played Penn State first game and, and really I made some some errors there that, that cost us a game and then had a tough game at home with Quinnipiac um, that, that we ended up losing uh, to a very good Quinnipiac team. But uh, could really tell from both those that, that our kids weren't going anywhere. And, um, you know, when you sometimes the turning points of a season aren't even when you realize them. Um, they, 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 you notice them later. And we had played down to URI and, and suffered a, a, a challenging loss. And in that loss had um, some – Situations that we weren't, that I didn't really think were, were what we want. I know they're not what our program stands for. We had a kid ejected. We had another two kids get technicals at the end of the game. And again, we lost a game that you don't want to ever lose to URI. And, and, and we lost it in a, in a manner that we didn't want to do it either. Um, but within those uh, infractions, we noticed that we had kids sticking up for one another. We noticed that we had kids that weren't going to back down. Um, and and credit to my staff and especially credit to my wife for bringing that to my attention. I was caught up in the actions and not the reasons for them. And I really think at that point, uh, we understood that we had a group that had a really good, solid uh, chemistry and, and were unified and, um, and didn't want to let each other down. And once we saw that, you know, we, we realized we could do some things that that maybe were above what people had had thought we could. Um, of, of all the numbers, the one that I'm most proud of is that we had eight road wins, four of which in conference play. Um, and, and in our eight conference wins, four or five, we were down double figures in the second half and, and won those games, including a triple overtime win. Um, those are things that you know you don't do unless you're really together. You don't do unless you're willing to, to really battle for one another. So um, you know that to me was kind of the the quick version of what really stood out and, and what was really a lot of fun to work with this group with. 
Sure, that obviously speaks a lot to, to character, you know. And obviously, talent is a big part of, uh, of the equation, too. Yeah. And uh, tell us about the contributions, especially of your senior leaders and your, your probably your top freshman, Mary Baskerville, who was the uh, uh, Big East freshman of the, uh, of the year. Yeah, it really, it really started with our, our seniors. Um, you know, Claire Che is a, a kid who had played a lot for us and um, didn't play as much this year, but was unbelievably vital to our team. Uh, her her passion, her teamsmanship, her work with everybody really engaged the whole group and really uh, no one wanted to disappoint her. Um, she was so, so valuable to everything we did. Um, you know, when you talk talent, that's Yo-Yo. Um, you know, Yo-Yo set a, a number of of records that will be really hard to challenge, both from the three-point line scoring and especially from the foul line, um, and had to do so while facing being the number one, uh, you know, point on every scouting report. Um, and then Maddie Jolin, who who really has just, uh, again, I mentioned it didn't really have examples of leadership and and became one of the best leaders I've been around in in my long career uh, of leadership and and really brought this group together on and off the floor very quickly. Um, you know, and this, that's a group of seniors that, you know, won five games as freshmen. And, and really, when we got here, we're really in a, a, a tough space. Um, but we, my staff and I recognized that those three were going to be the ones. They were going to be the ones, if we we're going to turn it, they had to, to really um, – believe in it and and they were going to be the ones to lead us and and they did and um you know you mentioned mary and and we knew we had something with mary we knew with it that uh, you know just with her athleticism her size her competitiveness were all things that we really um were excited about and um you know as an old time coach you know you you like the old best thing about freshmen is you become sophomores sometimes you're a little apprehensive that um so i kind of you know i started mary the first couple games was tougher on her than I, I should have been and chain made a change and finally I was I decided oh you know and my staff have been telling me for a while I decided to give her another start and the first game we started was against LaSalle in the Friar Classic and I think she had 18 points and 17 rebounds so again a great example of you know why wait so long good coaching there um <laughs> you know and then then she just took off from there and um, again, she was really willing to be coached. She was really competitive. And then, you know, again, had one of her best games late in the year against Penn in the, in the WNIT and um, is just getting going. Um, all of our young kids, while while giving us really, really solid things as freshmen, are just getting started and, and have chances to be really, really good players, really important parts of the campus community and, and really successful as a program. But they know they have to do a big part of that, and there's a lot of work to be done. Sure, sure. You mentioned uh, Yo-Yo. That's uh, Yo-Yo Nojik, and uh, she was a four-year starter for you, pretty much. She was. She she started every single game that I've been coached. So three years, she didn't miss a game. She started every game, uh, I believe, which was ninety-six straight. Um, you know, I think her freshman year, she was kind of in and out of the lineup. Right, right, right. And she ended up getting all Big East honorable mention on us, I believe. Yep, and her sophomore year and her senior year. Yeah. Three point scoring leader all time at Providence with three hundred and twenty three threes, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, I, wow. I, I I probably should know the exact number. That sounds about right. Three twenty three, three twenty four. But um, she, uh, yeah, and she she's the third most ever in Big East play um, for for three pointers as well. And uh, also, I think the second highest Big East free throw percentage and the highest uh, ever uh, at. at PC. Um, so, um, and, and each year increased those numbers too. Like we knew she was a great free throw shooter and to her credit, she, she got to, to the line more and more each year. Great, great. You know, Jim, I think it's important to put the season kind of in context in the sense that we've talked a little about the senior leaders. You had three seniors uh, on the squad, but everybody else was either a sophomore or, or a freshman, which with the progress that you made is, is very impressive. How would you describe this younger group in terms of uh, contributions and maturity uh, at this point? Yeah, I mean, they grew up fast. I mean, there still was a lot of time. And again, credit to our seniors that that, that they they were the only ones. And, and again, our sophomore class as freshmen, a number of them started a lot of games. A number of them had um, a lot of playing time. Um, but, you know, experience is the best teacher. And, and we had a lot of folks who hadn't had those experiences yet. So, um, you know, credit to them that especially they learned that quick in the non-conference to incorporate into the conference play. Um, you know, we started conference play losing our first three and we lost our last three. Um, so, you know, in between there, we're eight and four. Um, so really, uh, really we're able to make 
uh, adjustments quickly and to learn things quickly. And um, that's that's a skill and that's a hard thing for players to do. Um, you know, and it's good for us to know that we have that. That's something we want to continue to um, push uh, our kids to, to bring out. And, um, you know, we, we said right from the start, we youth was never going to be an excuse for us. It just couldn't be. Uh, it, it can't be. A, if, if something happens that is because of that, then it can't happen again. Um, and, and again, to our kids' credit, you, you can say a lot of things. It's about how the kids adjust to it, and our kids did a great job of, of believing that and adjusting to it quickly. Do you feel at this point that the team is really you know, gaining traction, gaining a lot of momentum? Is this something you feel that, that you can sustain going forward? Well, you know, as a coach, you, you can never be satisfied. You know, the second you're satisfied, you go backwards. And, um, you know, our, our goal is to always maximize our ability. And, um, you know, while I thought we did a lot of good things this year, I don't think we did that. I, I, I thought we left a few on the table. Um, I, I think we have kids who are, are, are talented um, and have a good chemistry, um, but there there's a lot more they can accomplish. And, and we certainly believe that. And that's not just basketball wise, that's academically, that's uh, as, as factors on campus. Um, you know, they are talented enough in all ways uh, to be held to a really high standard. And that's our job as coaches is to make sure they understand that, know that and help them get there. And looking ahead to next season, you've got three, at least that I'm aware of, new student athletes coming in. What do you kind of expect from them? Um, where do you think they could provide uh, help? Yeah, one of the things that will be interesting for them is is because we have so many people coming back, we can be at an accelerated pace. Um, you know, we're not going to review a lot of things. We're not, so um, it was vital in this class that we got people who, who learned quickly, people who, who uh, were also independent learners. And, and what I mean by that could come in on their own to, to pick up what they needed to at a, at a fast pace. So, um, you know, we think we, everybody we recruit, we recruit believing that they will ha- help us. And, and some of them, that help will be immediate on the floor. Some of that help will be immediate um, because of the character they have. Some of that help will be immediate because of the teammates they are. Um, and, and there's a lot of ways to help a program. And, and we think all three of them uh, will help us. Great, great. Uh, talking about recruiting, uh, that's a huge part of the equation of uh, Division One athletics, as you well know. Fans don't see the recruiting, all the behind-the-scenes stuff, the hours spent you know, on planes, the airports, whatever the case may be, looking at statistics and watching games. What's that world look like for you currently and maybe even in, 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 in during the season? Is, is that something that uh, you, know, you can accomplish? Yeah, it's, it's a unique world. Uh, it's very unique. Now, I, I am... I, I, my, one of my main mantras to, to my staff and in the program is that we, we take care of who we have before we worry about who we don't. Uh, we want to make sure that we are taking care of our players and the players that are here. And sometimes if you get too caught up in recruiting the next one, uh, you're neglecting the one you got. And, and so we believe most importantly is the players we have, developing them, uh, giving them everything we have. Now, that being said, you can't survive if you don't keep getting players. Um, so it's it's unique. This this weekend's a big recruiting weekend for us. Um, July's a big time for us, and 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 women's basketball is 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 a little unique. I think it's like volleyball in that uh, they have uh, kind of mass events, and and what I mean by that is they'll rent out a convention hall, bring in anywhere from twenty to sixty portable courts, and there'll be all those games going on at once. So so my days look like you know getting in there at seven forty five in the morning for the eight o'clock game. And then having no clue what the outside world is doing uh, till about 1030 at night, um, you know, and uh, you try to make sure you're good, that you go and, and find a snack or, or eat something. Um, but it's literally those days of just, you know, as I said, anywhere from 20 to 60 games going on one after another, after another, after another. And, you know, moving from court to court and, and being able to zero in uh, on the things that, that we need, the things that are important to us. And, um you know, then stay connected to my staff and being efficient in that, making sure we're, we're at the places we need to be to, to see the maximum people and the right people that, that would, would make Providence College a better place. In that respect, when you're at these kind of situations and recruiting, looking at student athletes, do you have certain criteria or a baseline? I, maybe it's not the best term to use. Or actually, for, for basketball, <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that you consider when, you, uh, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're looking for uh, someone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I'm 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 really blessed to have an incredible coaching staff. Um, 
I'd put them against anybody. And um, I can say that confidently because of how long they've worked with me, but I can also say that confidently because they were all student athletes that I recruited and have known for a long time. Um, so one of the, the things I always say to them is, is recruit someone who you'd want to be your teammate. Um, and, and there's always – Character is extremely important, but the reality is talent has to be there. It, it, there has to be uh, a talent there. And, and obviously there's the athletic side of things, but even a specific skill, basketball is still a game of skill. So if there's someone who is an incredible ball handler or someone who is an, an incredible shooter, um, you know, that can, that can uh, overcome some things that maybe aren't there as much athletically. So, um, so that's, that's the stuff we, we really, uh, we look for people who, who we'd want to be our teammates. We look for people who we want to be on our team. Um, and then we want to make sure that they have a skill that we can utilize that will put pressure on the defense. Jim, uh, obviously coaching is what you do best. How would you describe your own philosophy and style as a coach? I think a lot of some people might argue with <laughs> you on that. I do it with that best, but... Um, you know, I think I'm pretty intense. Um, you know, I, I tell people when I recruit them, I'm two different people. I'm the person that is sitting here in the office with you, and I'm the person between the lines. Um, I, I try to be very consistent. You know, this is what we're going to do offensively. This is what we're going to do defensively. Um, uh, I try to be very uh, clear. In, in I don't want players to wonder what their role is. I don't want players to wonder what I'm thinking. Um you know, I want to make sure they know what I'm thinking and what their role is, and 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 that's that's sometimes challenging for kids to hear and and for kids to to understand. Um, so I, I make sure that that I uh, explain that. And as I said earlier, I one of my cornerstones is we got to take care of what we got. We got to take care of the players we have, um, and make sure that 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 we're giving them everything we can, and continue to get players in our program who want that, who want to be part of that. I mean, that's to me, that's what Providence College is. Providence College is a place that takes care of who they have. Um, so we need to be an extension of that. Jim, what's it like to coach in one of the best conferences in the country, the Big East? It, it's For me, it's a dream come true. I mean, I, I grew up in upstate New York, not far from Syracuse. I grew up in the 80s when the Big East was, uh, you know, everything. And, and you know, would take days off school to watch the Big East tournament. And those are the kind of things uh, that that always drove me when I was younger to, to be part of this conference, to have this opportunity to come to this conference and, uh, at a place that, uh, like Providence, that is so incredibly respected and, and has such incredible people. Um, you know, it, it's, it's it for me. I'll be here as long as they'll, they'll let me. There's no place that I'd rather be or no place better in, in my mind. And do you feel since you've been at Providence that you've grown much as, as a coach or a person? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's a great thing about life. It's a great thing about our profession. Um, I've been able to, to spend some time with some of the great other head coaches we have here. I've been able to spend some time with the great staff we have here. Um, you know, we have, uh, have a guy on staff named Dr. John Sullivan, who's been an incredible influence on, um, you know, broadening my view and, and helping uh, guide me to, to improvement, um, you know, and, and uh, that that's that's what gets you going you know it, it may be the same job I was doing uh, back in the mid 90s um, but to have different challenges and to have different growth um, that's a really exciting thing let's talk about support for the women's basketball program here at Providence uh, what is it like and where do you feel that it's strongest well it's it's strongest um, it's strongest at the at the top in, in, in our department. Um, you know, I was in a really good situation at St. Bonaventure. I'd been there for a long time. I was very comfortable. Uh, we had great people around us. Um, you know, so the the opportunity of the Big East was one thing. Uh, but as a coach, you never want to go work for an AD you can't believe in, trust, and want to be around. And, and the moment I met Bob, I knew he had all those qualities. Uh, and and even, even more so is Jill LaPointe. Um, to have someone who's so passionate about our program and cares so much about our student athletes and all student athletes here, not just women's basketball players, and is is such a positive example for our student athletes, for my staff. Um, you know, th those are things that, that I just thought were um, really good opportunities for not just me, but the people that, that I would be bringing into our program. 
One area of support that's relatively new is that all our varsity sports here, men and women, now have Dominican team chaplains. And in the women's basketball team's case, uh, Father Bonaventure Chapman, who is an assistant uh, college chaplain here, is, is your team t uh, chaplain. How is that relation relationship going for you and, and the team? It's It's been one of the most positive relationships I've ever been part of. Um, you know, it was interesting when, when there was a staff meeting, I, I think I was out recruiting and I missed a staff meeting where they proposed this idea and all of the Dominicans kind of introduced themselves and said they were where they were from. And now my whole staff, as I said, played for me at, at St. Bonaventure. Um, so he introduces himself as Father Bonaventure Chapman from Buffalo, New York. It, it was over. Like there was, I, I mean, it, literally... <laughs> my staff didn't give me a choice they, they said we're, we're getting a chaplain and this is why and here's our going so so it was kind of just that was why we were fortunate enough to choose him and he has been unbelievable from um you know notes to to our kids after every game um little gifts to meeting our bus uh when we get back uh at win or lose at, at you know 11 o'clock standing out there with a sign or a handshake or a, a cheer um you know going on trips with us and spending time with our kids and um you know he has to move on due to, to dominican requirements um and we are really really sad um you know he is he has had a major impact uh, on our program, but more importantly, he's had a major impact on on, on all of us as, as human beings. Excellent. Moving forward, uh, Jim, what would be the short-term and, and long-term goals for the program in your mind? Maybe to short-term first. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the same. We just want to keep getting better. Um, you know, I, 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 I get... I, I just see no point in putting numbers on things or, or anything like that. There's there's areas that we we clearly have to improve, but um, we want to just keep getting better at at who we are. We want to keep getting stronger at what we believe. We want to uh, keep developing um, in, into the best version we can be. And I know that's kind of a you know stock answer, but it's uh, it's what we really preach and and what we want to see. And um, you know, for us, I, I have people on my staff who are great with numbers and analyze that. For me, it's it's I trust my eye. And um, while I like where we are, um, you know, it, if we don't stay on that, it disappears quickly. If we don't keep pushing it, uh, it levels out quickly. Um, so. So we really like our young kids, but uh, we also are very aware that, uh, you know, that that run in the spring was great. The support was amazing. It made our kids feel like they deserve to feel. Um, but that doesn't mean it changes who we are or what matters to us or how we got there. And, um, you know, that's that's what we are really um, making sure we we keep our people aware of and and keep pushing forward on. And in terms of longer term, Jim, anything in the way I'll say strategic strategic plan like that that you have in mind for the for the program? Well, you're always analyzing. You're always analyzing and, and looking. You know, two three classes out. What do you need? What do you want to need? You're always looking uh, at your your current players. All right, this is where uh, we can go, and getting them to understand that too, and wanting them to just be on the same journey. Um, you know, we we have places that, that we go. I often don't share those. What I have, I don't share them with my staff. I don't share them with anybody, um, you know, because I don't want to put that pressure on people or be thinking that's the only thing we could do. It's just like we don't believe in captains. I think everybody can be a leader. Uh, so we don't want to hold back someone's leadership. I don't want to hold back things we could do by just putting certain uh, things uh, in, in people's minds. Um you know, so a lot of that stuff we do do planning and we do uh, look out, especially scheduling and recruiting. Um, but for our, our play, and we do with our players, they have workout books, they have improvement books from year to year. Um, but we talk about where they, they should be ending up and where they should be pushing for socially, academically, and basketball wise. Coach Jim Crowley, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank you so much. It's, it's always a pleasure to get to talk about our program, and I, I really appreciate you guys taking the interest. And thanks to you, our listeners, for joining us in the Providence College podcast. You can subscribe to the podcast in all the usual places, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. If you like what you hear, please share it with others. Thanks again to our producer, Chris Judge. I'm Charlie Joyce. Until next time. <laughs>